Hi, this is your host of the Bhartiya and we are here at Open Source Summit in Vienna, Austria. And today we have with us once again, Hilary Carter, SVP of Research and Communications at the Linux Foundation. Hilary, it's great to have you back on the show. Swab is great to be back. It is. Uh, it's always great to talk to you. So first of all, I would like to uh, know from you about this event here. You know, last time we, you know, I mean, we keep coming back. That's, you know, LF Europe was also announced a couple of years ago. So I want to get an update from you about this event, some of the topics, sessions, just, just give us an update. Wow. Well, first of all, it's fantastic to be here in Vienna. It is so beautiful. It's my first time in Austria personally. And in spite of the weather, we have had a tremendous turnout of this event. Uh, we've had excellent registrations, um, a full house in the keynotes this morning, and the weather has not dampened the spirits of the open source community who are here full of enthusiasm. The conference is a buzz. Uh, the solution showcase is full. It's great to see everybody again. And uh, it, it feels like uh, surreal um, that we are a year after uh, being together in Bilbao last year. And so much has happened. So it's, it's just wonderful to be back together again. And in spite of the weather, here we are. Now let's talk about what kind of announcement you folks made here at the event. Yeah, so I think one of our most exciting announcements today was uh, the formation of the Open Search Software Foundation, which was a project contributed by AWS and announced on the keynote stage by Nandini Ramani, a VP from AWS. And she really drove home the importance and the significance of having a neutral governance um, and a neutral forum for open source projects and how that accelerates um, contributions and innovation and uh, collaboration. And we just could not be more thrilled to be the new home for the Open Search Project, uh, which is uh, designed to accelerate um, search, uh, analytics, and observability. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing that community grow. Um, so that was super exciting this morning. Another announcement was um, a new member benefit uh, at, uh, for LF members and CNCF members uh, from Unified Patents. Uh, for the past five years, the Linux Foundation has been supporting Unified Patents in the fight against um, patent aggression from non-practicing entities. And, and patent aggression is incredibly costly. It's costly in terms of time, it's costly in terms of financial resources, and it's costly um, uh, in terms of just overall waste. Uh, it can result in the, um, uh, the destruction of an open source project from a patent that should never have been introduced in the first place. And so um, by uh, um, extending the benefits to our members from Unified Patents, we are helping organizations uh, to better mitigate against uh, threats from non-practicing entities or patent trolls. And these include things like access to events, uh, access to um, presentations, access to insights about what is taking place in terms of patent law. Um, member organizations will have the opportunity to display the Unified Patents logo on their website as a kind of like beware of dog, do not think about coming after us because we are, um, we're diligent about our, 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 our patent use and uh, move on. So that, that I think is a really important uh, partnership, a, a wonderful extension of benefits and we hope all of our member organizations take advantage of this opportunity. Um, we also had uh, new releases announced from Valky, uh, their 8.0 release. It was just in Seattle, Open Source Summit North America, where 3.0 was released. So to see the Valky community accelerate um, new contributions, new releases, is really a testament to uh, that project's um, uh, thriving uh, under the LF. And we're very, very delighted to, to uh, have made that announcement with the Valky project today. Our keynotes, um, Gab's keynote wrapped up with the announcement of LF Decentralized Trust, which is um, the new home for the totality of our uh, uh, projects at the Linux Foundation that accelerate digital trust in terms of blockchain, a, a, a distributed ledger technology, identity, credentials, Web3, um, a brand new ecosystem 
and uh, the evolution of the Hyperledger Foundation. So Daniela announced that today, and it's it's um, a testament to our our commitment uh, to decentralized technologies and how governments like the the um, government agencies like the um, Bank of Brazil joining uh, the foundation and working on projects, um, uh, central bank projects, central bank digital currency, uh, and building out um, technologies that are, are proven um, to create trust, where trust is uh, the outcome of, of the ledger. It is no longer uh, the responsibility of individual organizations to create trust through intermediaries, but creating trust through code and creating those efficiencies that come with that. So we're excited to see the growth of LF Decentralized Trust Foundation under Daniela Barbosa's leadership and um, encourage folks to get involved in that project too. I will go back to the unified patents uh, part. Yes, patents have been a big issue and you know, uh, what kind of engagement with the industry players have because in the past, a lot of companies, they also contributed their patents. They also uh, said they will defend patents. They also gave up their patents to the open source communities. So can you talk about uh, the, the, the kind of structure of unified patents? Well, this is really a serious, uh, it, it not only hurts a lot of communities, and as you said, non-practicing entities, they are just patent trolls. They don't play any role there, and we have seen a lot of disturbing trends. So talk about who are the players in this space where people have more confidence. Yes, this is a very important uh, aspect of Linux Foundation. Yeah, I should say that it, um, the other organization that uh, folks want to know about is the Open Invention Network, which um, is has joined with the LF in supporting unified patents. And really, it's a community effort uh, to combat patent trolls. Uh, that There are, you know, a year ago, um, there was a call for um, comments on patent legislation with the United States Patent and Trademark Office because of proposed changes that would have made it easier to insert bad patents um, uh, for approval without the proper uh, legislative oversight that was approved in Congress. And we came together as a community with the help of Open Invention Network in partnership with Unified Patents and other open source organizations to really encourage commentary on this proposed um, a, a change to the process, which would have been incredibly damaging. So. Um, coming together on all facets of, of the um, patent process, as well as keeping uh, an eye on the fact that, that non-practicing entities are targeting open source projects like um, uh, at Linux Foundation, like at Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And um, they're, um, we need to, we need to uh, pull together all the resources in our community in order to keep them at bay. Since we are talking about patent, which is more or less like law legislation, I remember when I used to talk to Linus, I'll be talking to him again today after a long time. He said the software patent should not even exist you know, in the first place, but we have to deal with the reality. I remember at Bilbao, uh, we had a lot of discussion about CRA. Do you have any update on what's going on there? So there's no um, final language uh, yet. We expect that language to come out in the next uh, several months about what the expectations are for the implementation of the CRA and how we go about uh, ensuring that open source projects are compliant. What we are going to do at the LF is um, do some research about which of our open source projects are in a really good position today uh, to be compliant with uh, the Cyber Resilience Act, what we anticipate to be those uh, requirements that are formalized. And uh, we'll feature a number of projects that have, have taken all the necessary steps to ensure that um, security best practices are met. And uh, that's just one of the things that we'll be doing uh, to help our members uh, and our project communities uh, stay apprised of uh, latest developments in the CRA and ensuring that, that every project is as compliant as every other project. A few years ago, I think it was Ireland when LF Europe was also founded and created. A lot of projects came out, Open Wallet. And the, can you also give a possible update on what is going on with LF Europe? LF Europe's uh, second anniversary uh, in terms of, I think it was, oh, the 12th of September in Dublin, Open Source Summit Europe in Dublin, two years ago when we launched this new structure of Linux Foundation Europe. 
And we're so excited to have seen the growth in terms of the number of projects that have formed, uh, the number of uh, participating organizations, and the growing uh, European ecosystem. We've got more staff um, headquartered in Europe and uh, team members like uh, Dr. Mirko Boom, Federica Notorino, um, uh, and others who are here to nurture the open source ecosystem in Europe and encourage that European collaboration really leverages all the opportunities of, of the global open source ecosystem. That we're not trying to create a fragmented environment, but rather ensuring that local collaboration um, has every opportunity to scale globally and that European solutions can become global solutions and benefit from the contribution of people from all parts of the world. And we think more than ever, there's this tremendous opportunity for uh, LF Europe to nurture innovation in a number of different sectors, particularly in the public sector, which is not really, uh, not fully realized the open source opportunity. Um, there is this uh, tremendous um, um, impetus driven by antitrust legislation and other types of uh, legislation out of Europe uh, that really drive the need for open source innovation, for the use of digital public goods like open source projects. And um, uh, the notion that public money should be going into public code is probably um, uh, strongest here in Europe than anywhere else in the world. And we think that that's a, a, a pretty good philosophy and, I, uh, and we're trying to nurture that kind of thinking in all jurisdictions of the world because it really does matter. The, the interesting thing about Europe versus North America, I used to live in Europe was, and even when I, whenever I used to be at the Linux shirt, everybody would recognize, you know, in the US nobody knows what is Linux and whatever it is. And most of the time they say, we use it. A lot of grassroots, I mean, the whole kernel development, it came from Europe. A lot of kernel developers are here. A lot of, but uh, it's not at the organizational level. You don't hear a lot of companies, you know, but that is not the case. In US, it's totally different, you know, Red Hat. It, they are doing a lot of open source, Google. They, and they also, sometimes it feels that a lot of public money, it is allocated only for European resources. So they might not even want to contribute to an organization which is based in the US. And also, so uh, are you looking at, we had this discussion earlier also, other parts of words also, because open source we talked about is kind of global language. So are there similar efforts you're looking in the Asian area, you know, African, I mean, there are a lot of emerging markets. So what is your overall strategy so that folks can benefit from open source irrespective of the political region? A lot of the open source community is um, deemed to have a stronghold in North America, the United States in particular. 30% of our community, Linux Foundation members, and um, many, many, many uh, of our contributors are based in Europe. And so we're here to dispel that myth that open source is, uh, is uh, somehow um, only associated with US tech giants. That's just simply not true. Mm -hmm. We really are a global community. We really do benefit from contributions from mm -hmm. all over the world. And what is really exciting, one of the developments uh, that we've seen is a recognition of open source's global ubiquity and global significance, especially coming from the United Nations. Mm -hmm. And the recognition by the UN that open source represents a tremendous opportunity for innovation all over the world and to accelerate its use in all regions and to encourage governments of all nation states to embrace open source and become open source first uh, governments become open source first innovators. We've seen in Switzerland uh, 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 issue an open source first policy. And so these are developments that uh, I think are, uh, they originate in Europe, but have legs and can really carry um, weight with, uh, across other ju jurisdictions. Since you mentioned OSPO and this year you folks were at OSPO, this was a much bigger event compared to last time. And if I'm not wrong, you had a panel here as well. Can you talk about that? What was the whole theme there? Yeah, so uh, I'll, to remind, uh, in July, um, the United Nations hosted a two-day event called OSPOs for Good. And uh, the Linux Foundation um, was a participant in that event. I was a speaker, the OpenSSF was represented, and we had a panel 
discussing uh, the opportunity for open source, um, how we can encourage greater community collaboration, how we can accelerate the idea that open source is a driver of sustainability. And what do we need for that to take place? Um, the panel that is here in Vienna uh, will be represented by Omar Mosin, head of the uh, UN's uh, Open Source Program Office. Uh, Sachiko Muto uh, from Open Forum Europe, uh, who is a, a partner in the UN OSPOS for Good Event in July. Um, and, and myself and other participants to talk about the key findings in a post-conference report, which will be published, that, that brings together the key ideas and the themes discussed in New York and the actionable recommendations uh, that governments the world over and open source communities should really think about as, as they consider the opportunities for open source to really be an accelerator to meet the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So that panel takes place at, um, on Tuesday, day two of Open Source Summit Europe. And uh, I'm excited to have that opportunity to participate once again. Can you talk about some of the latest research work that came out of your team? We're on the uh, cusp of having about a dozen reports come out uh, in Q4 swap. It's um, uh, a really impressive cadence. Obviously, we have the launch of um, the Open Source Maturity in Europe report, our Europe Spotlight report, which is uh, the third year that we have published this Europe-focused report. And we're so excited because it reflects um, really the maturity of the open source ecosystem in Europe, um, the significance of open source for uh, European organizations to really accelerate their goals. It identifies the gaps in industries where open source is not yet fully, uh, the value is not yet fully realized. And um, uh, one of the most important Parts of that research is the foreword uh, written by um, Dr. Wolfgang Gehring from Mercedes-Benz, who talks about Mercedes' relationship with open source over the past 20 years, its formalization of an open source strategy in 2018, and why open source has been uh, so important to the success of this organization. And I think that personal testimony is a real asset to our research, as well as the qualitative interviews that um, uh, are featured prominently in this report. So I encourage everybody to uh, read the report. If you've got an interest in Europe, if you've got an interest in open source, check out our latest uh, uh, research report uh, published just today. Hilary, once again, thank you so much for taking time out today, joining us. Give us a date on Linux Fortune. Thanks for all the great work. And as usual, I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you as well.